Hello, thank you for choosing Orthopedic Center of Illinois for your surgical needs. Please watch this informational video regarding your upcoming surgery. We will discuss preoperative education, what to expect the day of surgery, and postoperative education. Preparing for surgery. Three to four weeks prior to surgery, schedule an appointment with your primary care provider for labs and a physical. If you have a cardiologist, schedule an appointment for surgical clearance. If you take blood thinners, please make sure to discuss this medication with your physician, as some may need to be held prior to surgery. Quit using nicotine products for improved healing and make sure you're eating a healthy diet for adequate healing. One to two weeks prior to surgery, Complete your nasal swab for MRSA if you are a Dr. Graves patient only. This nasal swab is good four to 14 days prior to surgery. You may receive a call from pre-admissions at the facility. If they have all of your required information, there is a chance they do not call. Stop taking certain medications such as vitamins and diabetic or weight loss medications such as Manjaro, Wegovi, Trulicity, etc. If you take any of these medications, please make sure to discuss with your primary care physician. Lastly, prepare your home for your return. Preparing your home is removing obstacles like small rugs, furniture, and making sure you're able to walk freely through your home. Have your medications ready for your return home, freeze your ice packs, and gather pillows for elevation and sleeping. If necessary, install handrails in your stairwell, bathroom, or your shower for easier mobility. Packing for surgery, bring your photo ID, insurance card, a current list of your medication and when the last time you took them, living will and power of attorney paperwork is optional, comfortable clothing, walking shoes, a walker or cane if you need one, and a CPAP or BiPAP if you use one. The night before surgery, you'll drink 20 ounces of Gatorade, clear or yellow, Gatorade Zero if you're diabetic. You'll be provided two packets of antimicrobial soap. The night before surgery, you will wash head to toe with your normal soap and shampoo. On a fresh washcloth, you'll put one packet of the antimicrobial soap or use dial soap washing your chest, arms, back, and legs. Let the soap soak in prior to rinsing. Do not eat or drink anything after midnight except Gatorade and get some rest and pack your items. The morning of surgery, you'll drink an additional 12 ounces of Gatorade. This is to be finished two hours prior to your arrival time provided. You'll shower with the additional packet of antimicrobial soap same guidelines, and take medications as directed with a sip of water. Your arrival time is at least two hours prior to your surgical time, and you'll check in at the designated area. At the Orthopedic Surgery Center of Illinois, you'll check in at the west door and go to the second floor. At HSHS St. John's Hospital, you'll check in at the pavilion and go to the second floor. At Springfield Memorial Hospital, you will go in the main door and to the left check-in desk named Pre-Surgical Services. And at Jacksonville Memorial Hospital, you'll go in the main door. Upon arrival to the facility, anesthesia will see you. They will discuss the risk and benefits regarding anesthesia. If you've had difficulty with anesthesia in the past, please let them know. With spine surgery, general anesthesia is used, which is a combination of medications that put you in a sleep-like state before surgery. General anesthesia uses intubation, where a tube is placed in your mouth and throat. This can cause a scratchy sore throat after surgery. It can also cause grogginess, nausea, and slower wake up. Again, if you've had issues with anesthesia in the past, please let them know the morning of surgery. Returning home, plan to have assistance 24 to 48 hours after surgery 
and somebody nearby one week following surgery. Arrange for help with your household chores, grocery shopping, and meals. Make arrangements for your pets. You can sit or sleep in a recliner, whatever is more beneficial to your recovery. Make sure you're getting up and moving around your home every hour, unless you're sleeping, as rest is also important. Pain, swelling, and too much activity are all related. Make sure you are resting. And you can use ice or other cold therapy to reduce swelling and pain for 30 minute intervals. Restrictions when returning home are no lifting more than 10 pounds, which is about a full gallon of milk. No repetitive bending, lifting, or twisting. Restrictions are in place for six weeks unless otherwise directed by your surgeon. Pain is normal and hurt does not equal harm. Eat as healthy as possible postoperatively for adequate healing and drink plenty of fluids. Use pain medications as directed. Do not use additional Tylenol or acetaminophen while taking pain medications. Use a stool softener like Colace while taking pain medication to avoid constipation. If you're battling constipation, you may use a laxative like Milk of Magnesia, Miralax, or a Fleet's Enema. Do not set alarms for pain medication when resting. Take medication once you awaken. Rest is important. Injury and complication prevention after surgery. With any surgery, you are at risk for a DVT, which is a blood clot in your leg. You'll notice increased swelling in your thigh, calf, or foot, pain and or excessive tenderness in your leg or calf that is not reduced with exercise or medication. If you experience any if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, please call your surgeon's office. Preventing DVTs are being active and using blood thinners as directed, repositioning often. Pulmonary embolism would be a new sudden onset of chest pain and or shortness of breath or unexplained anxiety. If you experience any of these symptoms, please go to the nearest emergency room. Preventing pulmonary embolisms, again, is being active, using blood thinners as directed, and repositioning often. Infection. Infection is noted as increased redness, heat, or swelling around the incision, persistent fever greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit, chills, foul drainage from the incision, and increasing incisional pain. To prevent infection, you'll want to use proper hand hygiene at all times, and ask others that are touching your surgical site to do the same. Do not soak your incision. Preventing falls is also important, so be cautious and ask for help. Pain medications can cause dizziness. Sit on the edge of your seat before standing and walking. Again, it's important to remove obstacles from your home. Shower daily, no baths or soaking at the in, soaking the incision. Use proper hand hygiene, and if the top layer of the bandage gets wet or is soiled, you may change it. You will have follow-up appointments after surgery with your surgeon, their nurse practitioner, or physician assistant. X-rays may be taken. We are here for questions. Please call us with any questions at our main line, 217-547-9100. Before you decide if urgent care or the emergency department is needed, please contact our office even after normal business hours. We always have a physician on call to help you with your questions or needs. Again, thank you for choosing the Orthopedic Center of Illinois for your surgical needs. We look forward to assisting you during your recovery.